don't buy a Polestar 2 until you've watched this video and you've considered some of the issues that I've been having. So yeah, I know that's a bit of a clickbait style start to a video, but uh, I've been inspired to make this video based on a few things that uh, have happened recently that uh, have kind of really frustrated me. And uh, I think I'd like to make that um, very clear to people who've watched my videos and to anyone considering buying a Polestar 2, that there are some key issues right now that are very, very frustrating about this car. So if you haven't already subscribed, uh, I'd really appreciate if you do down below, just click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That would be really appreciated. And uh, yeah, let's just dive right in to what I'm talking about and why I'm making this video. So if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that the Polestar 2 is a, is a great car. I absolutely love driving this car. The handling is superb. The performance is really, really good. The user experience of Android Automotive, Google Maps, so many things. The boot capacity is great. It's a really, really nice car. It's got certain features that you don't find on some of the competition, like a heated steering wheel, for example. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it is a really, really great car. So don't get me wrong. And I don't want this to uh, come across the wrong way, but there are some core issues with the car. And uh, right now, the thing that's bugging me the most is the 4G problem and the Wi-Fi issue. Now, if you have uh, been following Polestar and you've been following any of the Facebook groups, you've probably seen people complaining about 4G and Wi-Fi issues. Now, the 4G thing has been an ongoing problem. So this car really does rely on 4G to actually work properly. Um, the car's fine, it's just the infotainment system. Google Maps doesn't really work properly unless you've got a data connection. Uh, you can download offline maps, yeah, sure, you, of course. Um, but again, you don't get traffic data, it's not very dynamic. Spotify doesn't work properly, YouTube music doesn't work properly either. And uh, this car is, is built to be connected to the internet at all times. That is how you get the best user experience from it. So having 4G problems is, is frustrating. Um, then there's a Wi-Fi issue. Now, for me, I've tried uh, tethering multiple different phones, connecting to my home Wi-Fi, and at the moment, I'm just not able to do that. I could do when I first got the car, but since the November update, I haven't been able to connect to any of those things. And that is really frustrating because it means you don't have a backup. And what you really need is a backup to that 4G issue. So the two things combined together cause a, a big problem. Now, why am I so frustrated about this? The main reason is because this week I took the car to Volvo for them to have a look at it. And uh, Polestar told me that they would reinstall some software. I'm not sure what they needed to do, but it came back and uh, the 4G worked to start with. I could see that they had connected to a Wi-Fi network, but um, the 4G then disappeared later on in the day. And uh, this is kind of my own fault. When I got home, I couldn't connect to my Wi-Fi and I couldn't connect to either of the two phones that I tried. I should have done that at Volvo, so that, that is my fault. But I really needed to go, I didn't have much time. Now, this is, again, the issue is that Volvo is not very close to me, so I had to drive, it took me two hours to drop off the car and hand it over and get back home, and two hours to go and collect it. And basically, I feel like I ended up doing that for nothing, um, which is frustrating. It's a big waste of people's time. Now, this 4G issue has been ongoing for quite a long time, and I'm really hoping that if you watch this video, it, this, is, this is not a problem anymore, because I made this in January of 2021. But um, it's, it's been an ongoing problem for many users for several months, and that is where the problem lies. I was more than happy to accept a few teething issues and a couple of little problems that might crop up here and there with the car. That's okay, but having an intermittent issue like this for a long time, that's a little bit more frustrating because it makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes, that why are they not able to fix it? Why is it taking time? And when will it be fixed? I mean, I'm hoping it'll be fixed next week, but in reality, could, it, could this be an ongoing issue for months? Uh, you know, when will Wi-Fi work? I, I don't know because Polestar's customer service, as, as, as friendly as they are, a lot of the time just don't have the answers. And if they don't have the answers, then you get a sort of what feels like a cut and paste kind of response via email. And it doesn't fill the user with a great deal of confidence. So this is my number one issue at the moment. If you are looking at getting a Polestar, then, then bear in mind that uh, let's hope Let's hope that this 4G issue is solved um, and that is not gonna be a problem. And the same with the Wi-Fi. Now, 
Moving on to the next problem that I wanted to talk about is to do with range and charging. Now, I feel like this perhaps is a little unfair on Polestar, but it's also a little unfair on the user because there is a miscommunication and managing customers' expectations is one of the most important things for a car brand. So the range that uh, Polestar claim from WLTP testing is 270 miles. And in reality, in winter, when the temperature is three, four, five degrees or colder, you're not going to get that. But it's worth bearing in mind, you really aren't going to ever get the claimed testing range, or you'd be lucky if you do, because we, everyone who's driven a, a diesel or petrol car will know that you, you never get the claimed miles per gallon. That just isn't the way that it works. It's very difficult to match the lab testing um, that, that is done with these kinds of cars. But what is frustrating, I think, for a lot of users is that the online calculator for Polestar, and you can see that on the screen, it makes certain claims that I think are kind of accurate, like the, the motorway range or the long distance driving range that I get in the winter at five degrees is around 200 miles. So that's not that far off. But um, some people are finding it's worse and it's the inconsistency. It's it's people getting, say, 160 miles thinking, well, why am I not getting 210 or things like that. So that is frustrating. Now, this isn't an issue just with Polestar. I think this is with, with EV cars in general, but that is compounded by some problems with charging. And are these real problems um, or just sort of minor issues? Well, when it comes to charging on 150 kilowatt chargers, my experience is that in winter with the battery being a bit cold, you don't get 150 kilowatt charging speed at any point in the charge. Maybe 110, maybe 120. That is, is the best that I've managed. Now, again, it's about managing customers' expectations. If the range isn't so good, but you get a really great charging speed, then you can hit, you get to a 150 kilowatt charger, charge up really quickly, and then carry on. But if the two compound together, then that becomes a bit frustrating for users. And when are we going to hit 150 kilowatts? That's the question. Yes, maybe we'll get it in the summer, but the test that I have seen, and I've done myself, it's going to be for a very short section of the charge. Whereas a car like the Audi e-tron, you'll be hitting 150 kilowatts for a much longer section of the charge. Yes, that's a different car. It's more expensive. I'm not trying to compare, but there are some issues there with the way that manufacturers claim that the charging speed and the, the range of the car will, will happen for people. So if you are looking at buying a Polestar, just bear in mind that you need to think about the range that you're going to need from the car in winter and you're also going to need to think about speed of charge. If you want to charge very, very quickly, then the Polestar 2 may not be that car. So that's something that you need to bear in mind. Another significant frustration for me is that uh, there is no app for the phone to set anything up on the Polestar. And that is not due to be released until mid 2021 now and uh, that's a bit vague because that could be <laughs> that could be june july i guess that would be nice but uh yeah i mean i knew that when i got the car so that's that's absolutely fine i don't really have a problem with waiting for it but if you are looking at getting this car you need to know that there is no app for it because that to me is a slightly strange thing. If you are releasing a highly connected car that's got Google Android Automotive and is really advanced in many ways, why would you not have an app available straight away? Like that, that, that should be the easiest thing, I would have thought. I'm not an app developer, so I don't know. Clearly I'm wrong. But my point here is that an app should have been something that Polestar had available immediately to go with the car um, because We've become, people have come to expect that kind of thing. Like my last BMW 330e, that had an app. Yeah, it wasn't brilliant. Like it wasn't the best app in the world, but you could at least warm up the car from inside the house. And uh, that's quite a, a simple feature. It's found on a lot of cars now. And it, it feels like Polestar should have made sure that that was something that was either released with the car or a, at least within three months, say, of release. So, you know, I got the car, say, in October, but people got had, had theirs earlier than that. You'd, you'd have hoped by the end of 2020, or at least very early in 2021, that a proper app 
would be released for the car because my concern is that an app is going to come out and then there are going to be problems with it because there usually are like i mean you know as, no matter how much you test and trial something there are going to be teething problems so we might not get this app until the middle of the year and then who knows how long we're going to be fiddling around with this app finding that it's got glitches or crashes or it doesn't quite work things like that so i suspect it could be a while before we have a proper app that really is stable and works very well and this is something that i'm gonna i'm gonna say it i'm gonna mention tesla they have a really good app for their car that um from what i've heard is really stable and really reliable and that that's something that oh, for me is really missing from the polestar so please bear that in mind if you are if you're getting a car or you're looking at getting one there is no app available it's not due out till the middle of the year and even then let's hope that it doesn't get delayed further and that it actually works really well and it implements the features that that users really want to see from a, an app uh, on their phones that can link up to the car so the final thing i want to mention is is this a Polestar or is it a Volvo? And what's the difference? Okay, so Polestar is a separate brand and uh, yes, it very much is a Polestar. It is very similar to the Volvo cars, the Volvo XC40. Um, a lot of the components are similar, the buttons, the platform that it's built upon. But Polestar are very adamant that this is their brand and it's separate. However, when something goes wrong or some work needs to be done, you have to take the car to Volvo. So it's well worth having a look at where your local Volvo dealer is because it, as it happens, mine is not very close. It's 35 minute drive for me to get there. And by the time I've dropped off the car and picked up the, the loan car, it's basically two hours of my time taken up to go down to Volvo to drop off the car. And that's not too much of a problem, but it is something to bear in mind. The other issue sometimes is communication between the two. They are always very helpful. The responses from Polestar are very polite and friendly and Volvo are the same. But sometimes there's a bit of a miscommunication between the two. And with it being a fairly new car, I sometimes get the feeling that Polestar customer service aren't always 100% sure what to say and Volvo aren't sure what to say either because you've got these two groups trying to sort of work together to solve these problems which can feel a little bit messy and awkward sometimes like for example what i mentioned about having spent time this week taking my car there to have the 4g and the wi-fi looked at um, now yeah it feels a bit like i might have wasted a fair bit of time but again it's really hard to know if that is the case or not because of the way that the two units work together in terms of their customer service so this is just something to be aware of not a deal breaker for me but something that you should be aware of if you're buying a Polestar so yeah I mean hopefully this video has been helpful it is not intended to be uh, so off-putting um, you know I'm not saying don't buy a Polestar that is not not really my point but what I did want to make people aware of is that there are a few things that really bother me these aren't design features of the car these are back-end issues that are centered around um, some of the implementations and some things that could be better like the charging and the, the range but again that is not a deal breaker that does not put me off buying this car the thing that has put me off is the 4g and the wi-fi issue and actually it's the 4g uh, no, uh, sorry no it's not it's not the 4g it's the wi-fi issue that is the bigger problem because i'd be more than happy to tether my phone um, in order to solve the 4g problem temporarily but when you can't do that um, to what is a, a vehicle that you should be able to do that to becomes really frustrating and hopefully, as I said earlier, this will all be fixed. And uh, if you're watching this video in the future, these aren't going to be uh, big problems. But for now, um, I just wanted to share these frustrations with people um, and, and also to let uh, prospective buyers know that these kinds of things are happening and uh, can be a bit annoying. So I hope this video has been useful. Please, as I mentioned, if you could subscribe below, that would be much appreciated. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Thank you.